how to live to be 100 years old or older. Today I'm gonna to be reviewing some of the research that looks at some common eating patterns among the world's oldest people. Hello beautiful humans, uh, welcome back to Inc. Nutrition. I know it's been a while, but uh, if you haven't been here, welcome, my name is Jack. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm here to help translate the science of nutrition so that you can live a happier and healthier life. So perhaps some of you have heard about blue zones. Uh, these are areas around the world which are home to exceptionally long-lived populations. We're talking about a lot of hundred-year-olds or centenarians. And so far we're seeing some overlap, some correlations between specific areas such as um, regions of Japan, Greece, Italy, Costa Rica, California, and there are several other areas as well, but the blue zones tend to look at uh, those as of now. So naturally, researchers, as well as probably everyone, want to know their secrets. Are they doing something differently? Uh, what are they doing to you know, explain some of this? And can we apply some of their lifestyles and behaviors to a wider population and just give some recommendations to just help with longevity and overall well-being. So of course, there are many factors that we can look at uh, when we assess longevity. Things that we can control, like exercise, sleep, stress, how we socialize. And then there's things that we cannot control, like genetics and ethnicity. Um, all those play a major role. But today, I'm just gonna focus on food because I'm a dietitian, nutrition is my area. Uh, so let's dive in. First, let's talk about what they eat. Are there similar eating patterns among the lives of 100 year olds? Yeah, there actually are. Research is showing that there are some correlations. First and foremost, plants. Centenarians eat a lot of plants. Now, not necessarily full plant-based, vegan or vegetarian, but I would say plant forward. Somewhere like 70 to 80% of their total calories are coming from plant-based foods. Fruits, vegetables, um, whole grains and a lot of legumes okay so beans and lentils from what I have seen are a part of the daily diet of many of these people next we would have limiting the amount of processed foods so not eating a whole lot of food coming from packages or cans or jars tons of fresh produce and food that's even coming from their garden or their community garden or a lot of local food as well which to me makes a lot of sense i think there's a lot of food out there uh, that's highly processed that has a lot of food additives that we just don't quite know what's really doing in our body in the long run uh, so just go back to the basics the roots and have a lot of fresh food and building off of that another trend that i've seen is just a lot of food that's eaten from scratch a lot of home cooked meals and that also just makes a whole lot of sense. But this, this includes uh, desserts, okay? So added sugar, yeah, overall, from what I've seen too, not having excessive amounts, but they do have dessert. It's just when they do have it, it's typically made from scratch, which I think is great. Additionally, a lot of centenarians tend to live by the water. So a moderate intake of fresh wild caught seafood tends to be common, which is great. A fantastic source of protein, obviously, and then omega-3 fatty acids, uh, which most people don't get enough of from their diet. So it seems like that intake is pretty high. And then speaking of those fatty acids, healthy fats overall is also consumed in a large amount. So we're talking nuts and seeds. That tends to be a very common snack. Uh, and then oils, high quality oils. So of course, olive oil in like those Mediterranean regions of like Greece and Italy, that's gonna be common, but other high quality oils too. Uh, avocados were also in there in the mix. So just, I think as a whole, don't be afraid of fat. And this is a clear indicator that getting enough healthy fat can be beneficial over the long run. I also wanna mention a trend that I saw about bread. So bread intake was decently high. However, it's where the bread was coming from that I think makes the difference. So whole grain sourdough bread seemed to be the number one choice, which is awesome and I'm a huge fan of that. I think a lot of bread that we have in the Western world is highly processed, manufactured, 
It contains modified wheat. So moral of the story, don't be afraid of bread. Just choose higher quality bread. Maybe find a local bakery that does use heritage, ancient grains, uh, and go from there. And then finally, let's talk about beverages. There tends to be pretty much four drinks that centenarians have, on average, of course. So water, tea, coffee, and wine. All right, hydration seems to be on point. <laughs> I think they tend to have water, but just like as needed, they're very intuitive with their water intake. Again, just overall. And then tea, a lot of tea, a lot of tea. And depending on the region, it's it may vary, right? A lot of matcha and green tea in Japan, fantastic herbal teas in Costa Rica, in addition to high quality coffee in places like Costa Rica. But there are some research, a lot of studies that show moderate amount of caffeine intake has a lot of cognitive benefits. Moderate amount, that's the key. And then wine, right? I think we've heard this over time. You know, I think alcohol, it's very interesting. You don't need it and probably going without it overall is better for our health. But if you have some and if you can manage it, and if you have one to two glasses of wine a day, it there's correlations to, to longevity. I don't think it's necessarily causal and that drinking wine is always gonna be healthier. Uh, but this is just what we're seeing, right? Trends with these populations. So if this sounds like uh, the Mediterranean diet, it kinda is, which makes sense when you look at the blue zones and where they're located. They are either in the Mediterranean or have Mediterranean-like climates. So just a thing to think about. So that is on average what they eat. Now let's talk about how they eat. I found a pretty interesting review uh, from Colin from the University of Tennessee titled Exploring Centenarians Perceptions of Nutrition, which revealed some really interesting stuff. And it was a qualitative study. So they just sat down and had interviews, which I think, especially for this population, is perfect to getting really good information and data rather than looking at objective data from like surveys and stuff. We're actually asking them, what are some of your philosophies on food? How did you eat? What was growing up like? How was your lifestyle? I think that is so, so important when we're looking at longevity. So what were the trends? First off, they don't really think about it that much. What do I mean by that? They're pretty intuitive with their their eating patterns and their habits. They tend to eat when they're hungry and stop when they're full. And in the case of uh, Japan, they have this saying, harahachibu, which stands for or translates to eat until you're 80% full, which I love. I think that's very, very cool. Um, so overall, intuitive. They are pretty much the, uh, you know, textbook mindful eaters. Next, they said that they often, almost actually always eat with others. So this brings in the social benefits from food and mealtime. Really, really good, great to think about. Also, a lot of 100 year olds commented on their upbringing and their family life and what was it like from a, a food standpoint. And several grew up on farms or had just this farm to table philosophy, which is so beautiful. And that can often happen right in smaller rural communities. So I know that can't be controlled for many of you watching, but it's an observation. And then there's meal frequency. So from what I read, they are all creatures of habit. And I think all of us kind of are, but they seem to be so consistent over time with when they had their meals and two to three meals every single day seem to be the go-to. Two meals more common in Japan, three meals in the other areas. Uh, and so just consistency, consistency. And I think that helped ultimately regulate metabolism, help regulate hormone balance, circadian rhythm, all those things. And then finally, which is probably personally my favorite part of all this, I read a whole bunch of quotes that talked about how important it was for them to just enjoy their food. They find overall so much pleasure with their meal time, which is so good. It's so good for our psychological mindset and our stress levels. And they looked forward to meal time and eating unless, you know, certain medical conditions and all that, uh, there's always outliers. But that's something to remind everyone of, okay? Just uh, discover that satisfaction component of eating. <music> So what can we learn? What are some key takeaways from these individuals? What can we try to um, adopt, all right, as a, a whole society or just think about more? 
Well, first, I think being plant forward tends to be uh, a great starting point. And then having minimally processed whole foods that are locally sourced. That's uh, something I always preach and recommend too. Uh, and clearly it works for these hundred year olds. Also develop mindful eating skills, eat with others, um, be regular with your meal timing if you can. I know we live very busy lives, most of us, but try to find some cons consistency uh, there. And the last key takeaway I actually wanna talk about is the lack of extremes that I saw. No one was too restrictive uh, or trying to be too experimental. There was just a heavy dose of balance and moderation. <laughs> so are there really any surprises here? Eh, not really, not for me. Everything kind of checks out. You know, eating a variety of fresh food in the right amounts in an enjoyable, mindful way. To me, this is just more evidence pointing at how there's no real secret to healthy eating or optimal nutrition for longevity. And remember that food is just part of the whole equation, but it is a big part. All right, that's what I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you know, you took away something from this video that you can actually apply. Again, my name's Jack, registered dietitian at Eat Nutrition, where we are all about mind, body, and food. And that is what the dietitian ordered. Have a delicious day. A saying, hara ha, hara, hara. It seems like they're in. <laughs> year olds commented on their upbringing, up, upbringing, and perceptions of uh, eating should be the most pleasurable experience of your day. It is for me. <laughs> Food is joy.